We're here with head coach Larry Subrick before the baseball team starts its season Saturday in Florida. Coach, let's start with uh, Jesse Bosnick leaves, gets drafted by the Los Angeles Dodgers. You lose him, but you return eight guys. Uh, what does losing Jesse mean, but then you bring back a core of eight guys? Well, obviously, you always have to do, I think, what's best for the young man. In Jesse's case, this is a young man who was an outstanding student. He already came back this fall and took one more semester of classes, so he's one semester from graduating. He's going to plan on doing that next fall at the end of his minor league season, and you have a little bargaining power when you are a junior, so you had to recommend for that young man to go play professional baseball and finish his degree uh, when he can, and he's well on the way to doing that. So that's what best for, for Jesse Bosnick, so therefore it was best for St. Bonaventure Baseball. As far as returning eight position players, uh, uh, offense was not our problem last year. I think we were third or fourth in the conference in hitting, hit over 300 as a team. So returning those eight position players, obviously Boz was a big part of that offense, but obviously we think all eight of those position players, especially those three freshmen that uh, uh, immediately were thrown under fire, uh, should all be a little better this year. And uh, so we don't think offense uh, will be a concern. And we think we'll be better defensively because even people like uh, Jason Radwan, who played third base his whole high school career, and Billy Urban, who played shortstop his whole high school career, have now played a full season at second and third. All of the outfielders are returned at that position. Michael Greco for another year at catcher, Ingram at first. So we think defensively we should be better and offensively we should certainly be at least as good, even with the loss of Jesse Bosnick. You mentioned the offense. You did finish tied for fourth in the A-10. You hit 301 as a team. Uh, the, there's adjustments made to the bats over the summer uh, to try and minimize the four-hour games and to try and bring pitching back into it. You like small ball yourself. Do you see small ball being more of a factor this year for you guys, or do you still try and, do you still try and hit the ball out of the ballpark? Well, I think it's going to be, you know, right before you came over here, we were looking at weekend series, and, uh, you know, there were lots of weekend series where there was one home run hit by one team and zero by the other. Uh, hitting the ball out of the ballpark uh, is not going to be anywhere near as big as it was before. A lot of times in college baseball, if you got the first two runners on, you played for a three-run homer. I don't think that's necessarily going to be the case this year. I do think you're going to see more small ball and having more athletic people uh, is not only going to help you defensively, it's going to help you offensively so they can go first to third, steal a base, push a bunt, drag a bunt. So I do believe small ball is going to be uh, more important this year in college baseball. Okay. Offense wasn't a problem. Pitching, on the other hand, was an issue. This year, you get Kale, a, Kale, a healthy Kale Johnson back. You get another year under the belt of Eddie Gray and pitchers like uh, uh, Ravello. Uh, what does that mean for them and moving forward this year? Well, without a doubt, the starting pitching was the problem last year. We could score some runs. The defense was fair, and the bullpen was pretty good. But there was a lot of times we could never get to the bullpen. We were giving up seven, eight runs in the first four or five innings, and we were always behind. So you save your bullpen for the next day, and there was never a next day. We were giving up seven or eight the next day. Um, the thing we think has improved about that is we lost Kale, who was the number one guy last year for the season, and Matt Stewart, uh, the junior college pitcher, was scheduled to be the number two pitcher last year, and we lost him for the entire season. He never threw an inning. So that forced Eddie Gray uh, to get thrown into the Atlantic 10 uh, weekends, which he probably wasn't ready for, but by the end of the year, I think the last four weekends, twice he was the uh, A-10 rookie pitcher of the of the week, so he figured things out. So, uh, but the biggie's getting Kale Johnson back. Uh, Kale has thrown uh, this uh, spring already four or five times uh, live to hitters. His velocity is there, so there's no arm strength. Uh, right now, he's not locating the ball all that well. But again, he hasn't pitched in 11 months, so that is a long layoff. But the velocity there is the strength is there. So if he goes back to the one spot, and you can put Eddie at a number two, now Eddie is a very good number two pitcher in the A10. So we think the pitching, Brennan's had another full year under his belt. Ravello, who got, uh, Dice got hit all over the place last year when he was forced to throw. And uh, he's had three very good outings in a row indoors. Uh, so we think he's ready to improve. So we think the starting pitching is going to give us an opportunity to get to the bullpen this year and the offense and the defense being improved. We certainly think we'll be competitive again this year. Okay. Uh, ten newcomers, always tough making the adjustment from high school to college. Is there anybody that's really stood out to you in the fall, or and what do you expect out of this freshman class? Well, in all honesty, this freshman class is fitting into how we would like freshman classes to play, and that means they're not going to play a lot this year. Uh, I mean, in a perfect world, you would like really good freshmen to play as backup roles, and you groom them to start as sophomores and play quite a bit more, and that's going to be the case. We don't think that this recruiting class is a, uh, is a weak class, but we return all position players that we think are athletic kids ready to play. 
So the, uh, Justin Brozick uh, right now is a young man that's probably going to get some time at the DH role versus left-handed pitchers. Uh, but other than that, uh, most of the other freshmen are going to be in positions where they're going to get a chance to play on Tuesdays in middle of the week games and play a backup and support role uh, initially, unless of course you have injuries. So, uh, and, and that's a good thing, you know. I mean, playing three freshmen last year at first, second, and third, and two freshmen pitching a ten weekends, uh, it doesn't show that uh, uh, you know you had a great recruiting class. It shows that you had a couple poor ones before that, and you were forced to play some people that weren't ready. Uh, a lot of them ended up doing well, and they were good players and so on. Billy Urban was a freshman All-American, those type of things. Uh, but uh, we're not going to be in that position this year, uh, and uh, we're happy about that. Uh, Florida, first trip outside since the fall. Uh, it's kind of different this year. You're playing a lot of schools from the Northeast and Michigan. You don't have you know, Kansas State mixed in that's been outside for three, four, five weeks. Um, is that any different for you uh, in your preparation? No, in reality, uh, when you go to Florida, I mean, you're going to probably win some games you shouldn't and lose some games you shouldn't because people fly in and out at different times. They have different other series that they're playing maybe before they come to Florida. So sometimes you may have your number one matched against somebody's number six, so you maybe knock somebody off that you shouldn't, and vice versa. We may lose a few where your number six is thrown against somebody else's number one just because of the way the rotation worked out down there. Uh, the goal down there is to uh, uh, get all the pitchers a couple starts, uh, see where we're at, see if anybody's moving up and down the depth chart from the fall and uh, get ready for Atlantic 10 play. Obviously, you know, you're lighting up the scoreboard, we're going to try to win, uh, but the key thing is to get ready and be prepared for the A-10 game so we can get back to, uh, uh, you know, last year was the worst year we had record-wise since 1989, and we certainly don't want to repeat that. We want to get back to where we're uh, from 2000 to 2009. There was only one other school in the Atlantic 10 that went to the postseason as much as we did. So we want to try to make 2010 a forgettable moment and get back there. And that's what Florida is all about: is getting you ready for that. You mentioned that 8-10 tournament. The goal every year is to make it. Has that changed this year? No, absolutely not. I mean, uh, uh, I think you should be measured by the fact: Are you one of the top uh, programs in the conference? And uh, last year, for the first time in quite a while, we weren't. And we want to get back to that. And once you get there, I do believe uh, some of the discrepancies as far as weather and stadiums and so on and so on. It's your number one against somebody else's number one or number twos. And it's your top 12 players, uh, top nine, and their three best pitchers against somebody else's top 12. During the regular season, some of the schools that are fully scholarshiped have some depth um, uh, advantages over you. Uh, those depth advantages aren't generally as important in the conference and if you play well you can come out of there and go to the NCAA. So getting back to the tournament is always the number one goal and uh, uh, if we stay healthy I, I think we have a shot to do that this year. I would v be very much disappointed if we don't do it the next couple years because we have a lot of sophomores and juniors that will be playing this year but I do think uh, we're skilled enough that we probably have a shot to get back there this year. Okay, Thanks a lot coach and good luck. You're welcome.